Okay, I press start broadcast. So we're almost, you are live now. Hello, welcome everyone. And uh, I don't know if you were at the previous uh, sessions. If not, I would like to introduce myself again. I'm Cheryl Korlitz. I'm the director of Gap Year Recruitment for Masan North America. And I'm so excited to be here today uh, because this is an important session. We get so many questions throughout the year about how to uh, apply to gap year at the same time that you're applying to college. How does that affect your decision? How does it affect the application process? So we decided to just get ourselves an expert here. And I could think of no one better to bring to uh, here to answer your questions than Michael Courtney. He is currently the director of um, college guidance at um, college counseling at SAR High School in Riverdale, New York. He was previously the assistant director of undergraduate admissions at NYU. He has been doing college admissions for over 17 years. And I know that uh, he's going to be able to address most of the issues that you have on this. So we are going to leave a little bit of time at the end for some Q&A. So if you have questions, feel free to put it in the Q&A board. You'll see that tab in the upper right hand of your screen, and I'll be monitoring that. And we're going to let Michael get started and do his presentation. Thank you so much for the introduction, Cheryl. So indeed, I've been working in college counseling for quite some time, and I could tell you with full assurance that college admission folks appreciate a gap year. It's something that they look forward to, actually, because they know students coming in the following August come in more mature. They've been independent for the first time. They're less likely to engage in the temptations of the first month of college because they've been able to really live independently and do pretty well for themselves uh, while they're abroad or on some type of gap year program, such as our students who tend to go to Israel for the year. What's different since COVID is just a little bit with the admission process where now it's not as common to be granted a gap year off a wait list, if admitted off a wait list, like it used to be, but still if admitted early decision, regular decision, early action, being granted a gap year is still very, very common. And about 90% of students from SAR High School where I work do take a gap year. In terms of the application itself, on the application there's a question about a gap year and if you're planning on taking it, I tell my students you actually don't have to write you plan on taking a gap year unless you really are certain. Sometimes kids just don't know. Barnard College is the one school that really does want to see if you're planning on taking a gap year for their processing. But otherwise, I tell my students now who are seniors, you're applying for fall 2022, even if your intention is to take a gap year. And what happens is once they are admitted and they know which, with which one college they want to matriculate, then they can request a deferral from that one school, and that school will typically grant the deferral. So the idea is that they are excited for students to spend the gap year and come the following fall. So my seniors would come fall in 2023. A few things to know about gap year. One is that deadlines really do matter. So it's really important to pay attention to deadlines, whether it's the application deadlines, also the financial aid deadlines. And families ask, if I know I'm taking a gap year, what's the purpose of doing the FAFSA senior year? And the answer is to actually get financial aid package comparisons among the schools you're considering. So even though the student might not be going to college in that fall, my kids will be going fall 2023, they need to know if they're going to deposit with one school by May 1st, which school that's going to be, a financial aid comparison is going to be important. So they're still doing the FAFSA this year, then they'll do it for the subsequent four years. It's also important to know that attaining credit during the gap year for the institution where previously deposited, it can be arbitrary. So common examples of schools that are very generous in credit granting include Binghamton. They typically allow a year of credit. Queens College allows a semester of credit. And the other institutions, you know, it really does depend on how generous they want to be. It depends on who the registrar person you're dealing with is. So some schools will say that they want it to be that you are at a program that might be more like a yeshiva seminary where you're not fully matriculated in credits. Other schools might be more um, generous in how they grant credits. It's not like a set rule. So it depends on the school that you're dealing with. If not happy with one's college options during senior year, applying during a gap year, it's pretty common. It's not that rare. So if a student doesn't want to commit to a school in senior year because they think, you know what, my grades are better senior year, I might be doing really well in the gap year program, I might have more things to impress an admissions office with, 
applying during gap year does happen. You might not have as much handholding from the high school college counseling side. You might have to reach out to them to get the help you need, but it is pretty common for students to apply during a gap year. If attending a credit bearing program, such as Bar Ilan or Aardvark, and there are a few others, a student can oftentimes apply from Israel as a transfer and have better college admission results than they may have had in their senior year of high school. So admission offices, they still strongly consider the high school transcript when students are applying one year out of high school, as opposed to college sophomores who are applying for junior year. However, the college transcript, let's say you're on a program like bar Ilan, is gonna impress, especially if a student is doing well or taking a number of credits. If applying from Israel for transfer admission and the program is generous in granting credits, which could be 30 plus, SAT, ACT scores really do become superfluous. Now, they are superfluous now in the COVID-19 landscape. That wasn't the case pre-pandemic. So the idea is that if you have a lot of credits to showcase, they'll focus less and less on standardized testing and more on the credits that you have from the college where you're spending that gap year. Other stuff to know. Um, so admission offices, they still do appreciate the value of a gap year and how mature those students are. And what's interesting is there are some colleges that have a January admission whereby students can spend a gap semester or a gap year and a half. Um, examples include Brandeis, Binghamton, Boston University for the College of General Studies, NYU. So what's interesting is that we'll have students who might do a full gap year and then do a fall semester where they might take courses as a non-matriculated student, such as at CUNY, or they might do an internship, or they might do volunteer work, or they might do a year and a half in a gap year program. So if you're given January admission, that doesn't negate the opportunity to do a gap year. It just means the deferral goes from January to January. It doesn't go from January to September. So my recommendation here is that for anyone strongly considering a gap year, don't let the college admission process deter you from wanting to take the gap year. You could definitely do both, apply both to um, colleges for the year following and apply for gap year for this fall. And things will fall into place. My students have gone to schools where they've allowed a gap year. A lot of schools may even allow a second gap year. They might do it one year at a time as opposed to just granting it two years in senior year. But the idea is that you are definitely able to do gap year and then college. And now I'm happy to answer any questions. So I, I've seen a few questions here. Um, so one question is, when is the best time to ask colleges for deferral? So that's a great question. So some schools will actually have deadlines, other schools won't. I'll give you an example. Uh, CUNY with Macaulay Honors College, they want to deposit by May 1st and that deferral request by that same date. Most schools, they'll have it on their website what the deadline might be. If not, you can always call. In the past two years, things have shifted where some schools need to know earlier. It used to be schools wanted to know by July or August. So it really depends on the school and what they're trying to do to fulfill their fall class through the wait list and where they're trying to meet those gaps. And I have someone who's asking about doing a gap year between freshman and sophomore year. Do you have feelings about that? So doing a gap year while in college, whether it's doing study abroad for two semesters, taking a leave of absence, not too uncommon. People do that. And to go to Israel between freshman year and sophomore year and being able to take courses perhaps at some secular institution in Israel or doing kibbutz, volunteerism, whatever it might be, that's done a lot. That's great. How do you feel about, this is me <laughs> asking the question, how do you, you feel about this, this COVID waitlist issue? Do you think things are, are going to change? Do you, like, how do you feel they're going to handle that going forward? So it's interesting. A school like Barnard, I brought it up before, I'll bring it up again. Historically, they did not want a student off a waitlist who's admitted to go to gap year. They wanted the kids admitted off waitlist right away. And other schools were more generous. I know Harvard and Yale, by the way, if you got off the wait list there, congratulations, they'll still let you take a gap year because they know they could fulfill a class with ease. Right. So my feeling is I've had a couple students where they're actually able to do a gap year while they were Zooming into their college at night. So the seven hour difference enabled them to be at a gap year program during the day. And then at night, they're able to take their classes seven hours ahead in Israel. And it takes a really motivated student. I had a student do that last year from Yeshiva in Israel while he was at Cornell as a freshman. He did save on Cornell housing. He saved a lot of money on Cornell housing. Right. Um, but the idea is that I had a couple kids do that. I had someone else do that with Brown as well. Right. And Cornell has a special program, actually, where you can enter like as a sophomore, I think. You're right. Right. They also have guaranteed transfer. That's something else. That right. Is that what it is? Yeah. Like, that's the thing. It's really hard because 
every school is so different. So I always say, like, if you are working with a, a college counselor, you need to let them know that you you are interested in this and to stay on top of everything. Don't keep it a secret that you want to do a gap year. Make sure that your high school counselor knows that this is part of your plan because having that help, it, it makes a huge difference. Right. So I have a, a question that I don't know even know it's a question. It's sort of a comment and get your feeling about it. One of the things that has come up is that deferrals become issues if students have a financial aid package. That seems to be the one place where mm, I don't know that there's much you can do about it. But is that something that you have have come across? And do you have what are your insights? Sure. So as long as the financial aid package that you, someone receives senior year, if they want to apply from a gap year the next year for financial aid, as long as the parent uh, income figures are relatively the same, they'll get the same package. Well, if parents made a lot more money the next year, they'll get a less generous package. If they made a lot less money, someone lost a job, they'll get a more generous package. So the idea is as long as salaries are in line year to year, it'll be the same aid package. If there's a big discrepancy based on life circumstances, then the financial aid offices take that into account. Uh, the other thing I want to say before is that um, to a request a deferral, some schools might have on their website, like NYU has a specific deferral request form because it's so common. Other schools, it's just writing a quick email to the admissions office stating that you want to request a gap year to pursue whether it's religious study or travel programs, some type of community service program, and they'll tend to grant a gap year. Right. So I'm, I'm really curious, as gap year keeps growing, because it has been growing, as you know, over the past years, I'm just wondering at a point like when we have so many people who are taking a gap year, when are the universities actually going to just like make it part of the process and stop doing like the deferral thing? But we're not there yet. But I do foresee a time when, oh, you know, it just might be something that so many people are choosing to do, which is great. Right. And in terms of their numbers, they'll take into account that they will have some gap year students and they'll still be able to make a class even with the kids who are abroad. So some parents might be worried, oh, I heard a lot of kids took a gap year, it's going to hurt my student next year. But the enrollment managers, basically their job is to be able to figure out how many of those kids who were deferred for the year are coming, how to save those seats for those kids while still admitting a new class, how to keep in mind that we want to have a wait list that we can satisfy people if we're under-enrolled. So those enrollment managers who run the admissions and financial aid offices really do take these uh, considerations into account. Right. So I, there's a question here, and you actually addressed it a little bit. It says, do public universities ever accept a gap year, or do you have to reapply and take your chances? But you mentioned Binghamton, uh, you know, specifically. And do you notice a difference between uh, state universities and private? Let's just ask the question that way. So that's a great question. Rutgers, a few years ago, uh, made you reapply. In recent years, they've allowed you to just take the gap year. Uh, CUNY allows for a gap year. Uh, my kids go to the University of Michigan, University of Maryland, so they don't make you reapply. University of Massachusetts, okay. Amherst, SUNY Albany. So I have not seen that with them. I know University of Connecticut does not get grant gap year. And the UC system, University of California, it takes a special exemption. It's not so simple. So that's a great question. Right. University of California pretty much is, is a little bit difficult on everything. <laughs> Zone beast, exactly. Right. And, you know, and, and good luck getting in. It's really hard. So, and congratulations when you do. Absolutely. Exactly. So, um, yeah, no, I, I was smiling because when you said University of Michigan, I'm in Detroit. So yeah, University of Michigan is, is our, one of our local universities. And I also know having worked all, although with Wayne State University, which is the Detroit based uh, state university, they do encourage you to just reapply and they tell you, you know, just, just don't do the deferral. So it, it really, it, it, you know, whatever works for them. So. Uh, and I've had a student get into Wisconsin, Madison, able to defer. I've had a few students do that. So that wasn't an issue for those kids. Someone right. Just okay. So we are saying that UC system will just final, or we'll finish here. UC system doesn't really accept a, a gap year, right? It just takes a special exemption. So you have to make a good case for yourself. I'll make Okay. So you shouldn't count on it is what we're saying, but not right. completely a no. And then a question about do colleges usually defer academic scholarship offers? Yes, they do. As long as your senior year performance is in line with what originally got you that scholarship. So if you tanked oh. senior year, you might lose that. So if you had a really good senior year in line with the first three years, then any scholarships that you're awarded as a senior will carry over during the gap year to your next four years beyond the gap year. 
So there you go. Stay vigilant. It's not over till it's over. Okay. That's, that's my recommendation also. So Michael, thank you so much for being here. This was great information. You covered a lot of territory in a very short period of time. So uh, really such a pleasure. And we are so fortunate that you came here today. So thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us. And I hope you'll join us at the next session. See you soon. Have a great day. Bye. Everyone. Bye.